Mark Smith is one of our officials tonight in his 20th NCAA tournament. Couple Final Fours. Eric Curry, a terrific official. Three regionals, 18 tournaments. And Owen Short in his fourth NCAA tournament. And away we go with the Gators having it first. Samuel down low, quickly doubled. Clayton on the wing, taking it inside, and he gets two. Well, Clayton can really score. Transfer from Iona, and he is very aggressive offensively. Yeah, the drive inside, they can't get it on a K.J. Simpson move. And the other way come the Gators, 11-7 in the SEC. A diving drive inside won't go. And a miss right there by Condon. Outside, three, got it. Big shot to get the game going. And Tristan De Silva hits it. Each of these teams likes to play at a quick pace. And Colorado's an excellent shooting team. And De Silva is a guy who can hit from anywhere on the court. Yeah, and he was a star of their game the other night, Dan, to get him here. And Florida is also a team that plays quickly, Stan, and they've got a lot of offensive weapons. Richard's just one of them. Buffalo's 25-win season. De Silva's on top. Luke O'Brien inside. Lampkin's got the ball, and he maneuvers some bodies with his size. Yeah, he does. Look, Lampkin is a guy who can really score down low. Long shot, Clayton for three. Wow. Well, he's got deep range and a much better shooter off the catch than off the dribble from three. 41% off the catch, only 26% off the dribble. They've got to make him put it on the floor. Lampkin again inside. He'll battle Samuel, who grabs the rebound. That's a really good job by Samuel. You've got to get between Lampkin and the basket. With a turnover, Luke O'Brien, Lampkin again, maneuvering that time into Samuel, and Tyrese, Samuel will pick up the foul, and the senior from Montreal picks up number one. Well, especially with the injury to Hanlog, they can't afford fouls like that from Samuel. And the great Bob McAdoo told me when I first came into the NBA with him, he had a great teaching point for big guys, that big guys should never get a foul, Dan, below the shoulders. <laughs> That's a good point. Javon Hadley. Condon was defending. Rebound right there by Zion Cohen. And Cohen out of uh, Pleasant Hill, California. With a long shot here, it's Richard who puts it through. Will Richard knocks in a three. And, and by the way, from Pleasant Hill, California, I talked to him yesterday because I grew up out there. He actually lived in Martinez, which is a far better city it's where i grew up and he actually lived there he just went to high school in pleasant hill o'brien takes him right down the lane we have a very quick move well so far what we're seeing in this game is some offense not very much resistance by either team on the defensive end i mean good heavens nobody steps in to help you can see on each side of the picture there's two white shirts they may as well bought a ticket for all they did on that particular play. I think, yeah, both teams not getting a lot of help, but these are two really good offenses, and we expect this one to be pretty high scoring. So the Buffaloes beating boys who stayed in the first four Wednesday in Dayton by seven. They shot 44%. Another long one. Richard cans it, and he's got eight. Well, Will Richard comes in averaging 11. He's got eight already. So it's not necessarily the guys you expect all the time that do the damage. Here's Simpson. First team all Pac-12 player. Lampkin got great position, and that was the key on that one. Well, he got great position, but that is a great pass by Tristan De Silva, who's so skilled and can do so many things at both ends, and he even draws the assignment on Samuel defensively, giving away a lot of weight, but he will work hard. Samuel puts it through his first two of the game, and he averages 14 a game for the Gators. That's a tough matchup for De Silva right there, even though he has guarded taller players all year long. Adley on top. First time in the tournament for the Buffaloes in three years. Wide open lane, driving with ease. Simpson gets it there. Well, again, nobody coming to help, and Simpson did a great job using his body to make sure that Samuel couldn't reach over and block that shot. 
Well, Florida, a team that definitely is intent on outscoring you, Dan. Condon down low. Lampkin in the way. And the push out. Got him off balance, perhaps. Samuel gets it inside. Picks it back up and in. Well, Samuel really got mismatched in there against Hadley and took advantage of his size. And Colorado normally an outstanding defensive rebounding team. They are, but they struggled the other night against Boise yeah. State. Gave up 19 offensive rebounds. Two terrific conferences, two terrific teams. The Buffaloes and the Gators. Back in Indianapolis, taking a look at advanced stats. Presented by Invesco QQQ. All about the Gators coming in. Number seven seed, but they're without one of their big players, and I say that literally today. For more, let's welcome in Andy Katz. Micah Hanlockton is here in this building on the bench, and he made it yesterday. It's really amazing after that compound fracture in his left leg that happened during the SEC championship game on Sunday against Auburn in Nashville. He had the, the incident happened about 12:30 in the afternoon. He had surgery at 4:30. And when he woke on Monday, they told him, if you go back to Gainesville, you won't be able to get here to Indianapolis to get here in time for the game. He said, I've got to get here. He stayed there, made it back in two days. And two days ago, as you see in those jerseys, hand locked in as number three, the equipment manager put these jerseys together so they all could wear them. He told me the pain was unbelievable. He's in a little bit of a shock. There is no timetable for that recovery, but he is determined to make it back on the court for the Gators. Good stuff, Andy. They will miss him, and that's what they start today in freshman Alex Condon, who is in atop the circle and looking for the ball, and he's got it right now. 6'11". He's a player that has been getting more and more time. Look at him maneuver down low. But the rebound corrupted by K.J. Simpson. That's his first start in Australia. Tapped it right there, fighting for it, and claims it inside. He must be a pretty tough guy, though, because his other sport is Australian rules football. Yeah, yeah. That, that's no joke. <laughs> he was on the national team, and he trains with them still. There's a whistle and a foul, and K.J. Simpson will pick it up. The terrific guard for the Buffaloes, the first on him. And this is a Florida team that really likes to attack you off the dribble. They shoot a lot of free throws. They make a lot of free throws. And Colorado is not a deep team, so they've got to be careful to stay out of foul trouble. Lampkin checks out. Dak will check in. A freshman from Lincoln, Nebraska. Bang got Dak for the Buffaloes. And Cody Williams also into the game for Colorado at the last whistle. The younger brother of Oklahoma City star Jalen Williams. Beautiful stroke right there. Newly instated Thomas Huck, a freshman from New Oxford, Pennsylvania. Well, you know, we were talking about Hauk yesterday. His shot looks beautiful. It does. And yet he's a 24% shooter from three coming in and 44% at the line. It doesn't pass the eye test. To Silva inside. May have been grabbed by Hauk. That's the first three Hauk has made from since March the 2nd. He had missed 12 in a row before that. De Silva. Dunk. Timeout, Florida. At least they were signaling for it. Now they've got no, a no. rim that is cocked. Todd Golden wanted a technical foul called for hanging on the rim. And there, the Alex Condon showing you he's uh, very versatile. He fixes the rim. Those rims are breakaway rims, and it just didn't bounce back up when he hung on it. Yeah, correct. And that is already De Silva's fourth assist of this game. We're, we're just over six minutes into the game. This is a really skilled guy, De Silva. He can really shoot and pass. A couple assists a game, so already he's well over his trademark in that. Kugel is in, on the cut, lost inside, retrieved by Hauk. Aberdeen has checked in. Denzel Aberdeen for the Gators, and he's got the ball right now. A sophomore from Orlando. Dak is defending. Shot clock and one. We have a leaping rebound by Simpson. Ball was deflected out. Uh oh, and De Silva was going for it. And they may change the call. Oh, no, they're not. They're going to stick with it. It is Florida's ball. Well, that happened right in front of us, and I did think Florida tipped it out of bounds. And De Silva thought so, too. Oh, he they did. I mean, he could have secured the ball. Literally 
But you know what? Don't leave it up to the referee. Absolutely. If you can grab it, grab it. And he could have grabbed this one. But it was obviously tipped and an obvious missed call there by the referees. Aberdeen to Samuel and Samuel against the Silva and back inside they go and Aberdeen aggressive with his shot puts it up and through in his first two. Well Aberdeen can play off the dribble very very quick first step and he can finish but this is where he does his best work in my opinion. He can really guard the ball defensively. Dan Simpson there you're talking about it Stan. Let's see on the transition Kugel at the other end. All made possible on the steal by Aberdeen. Yeah, just great defense. Defense turning into offense. Anthony Richardson you saw right there. The Colts quarterback and a former Gator quarterback. A high pick injured early. They have high hopes for him in with the NFL and the Colts here in Indy. On top. Cody Williams. A McDonald's All-America with a spin shot. And the rebound is out of bounds and off of the Buffalo. Oh, yes. It'll come for the Gators the other way. Well, Cody Williams in the eight teams playing here in Indianapolis is easily the uh, best draft prospect, even though he's not getting a lot done here. Going to go in the lottery this year. Aberdeen. Hawk, three. Hawk couldn't get it. Rebound, Simpson. Well, Colorado, they're playing a team that can really score, and to keep up with them, they've got to be able to score. Nice job by Gak right there. Jack's got four off the bench. Pulling the other way. First team, all SEC. Ryan Port. With it now, Riley Kugel. Going with the move, draws the defense of Simpson. First time in three years the Gators have been in the tournament. Tapped up. How can it? Digging it out inside and finally picked up by O'Brien. Luke O'Brien. Nice speed. Great finish to Silva. But Luke O'Brien made it happen. These teams both do a really good job getting the ball into the offensive end very quickly and then they don't worry about setting up they just play 14 of colorado's first 18 points are in the paint inside off balance samuel couldn't get it buffalo's the other way the silva splits the d whistle blown foul call and that i think is on aberdeen watch this pass it was a beauty the cutter for two Well, Todd, it doesn't seem like offense is the issue, but Colorado's doing a good job of getting right inside this lane. How do you prevent that? Yeah, we got to do a better job keeping out of the post. Obviously, Lampkin had some success early. Their uh, backup big guy has four quick points on us. Got to do a better job in the paint as we continue on in the first half. Thanks, Todd. Yep, you're welcome. Guys, both teams very efficient to start. Colorado, eight field goals made on eight assists. Florida, ten field goals made on two assists. And maneuvering right now, Javon Hadley. A lot of traffic. Lampkin is back in. Samuel drives him out. Condon will double him. Inside. The hesitation. The double. Oh, he was in a straight jacket. He could not get out and he coughs it up. Kugel. Inside. Into Williams. And a whistle and a foul. I thought this was going to end up in a layup. This is a great behind the back pass. But Kugel able to get in there and get a piece of the ball and then take the ball down the floor. Williams picking up his first. About halfway through this first half. Gators have won three straight in the SEC tournament to reach the finals and lost to Auburn by 19. Samuel looking for a cutter. Now makes a move. Aberdeen. Samuel. On the wing, long shot, three won't go off the mark, Clayton. 36% three-point shooter. O'Brien takes it the other way for the Buffaloes. Where oh, they miss Lampkin inside. O'Brien. Ooh, and Condon was bumped by Lampkin, and Condon comes up holding his lower back. 
As they discuss it in there, 9.42 here the first. They're going to count the basket and then call the foul on Lampkin. And that's the right call because it's clearly a foul on Lampkin. He runs over Condon. And in that particular play, if it's a shooting, if there's a shot good that goes up and there's a defensive foul, if the ball has been released by the offensive player, then the basket is good. Lampkin is a big rascal. A 6'11 senior, formerly at TCU, now with the Buffaloes from Houston, Texas. They didn't Condon. like him picking up that foul, though, No, Kevin. that's a bad foul. They have kept him off of Samuel, now Hadley guarding him for just to stay out of foul trouble. Slashing inside is Aberdeen. Oh. And they finally get it to go. Samuel with the touch. They're doing a great job. That dribble penetration has drawn the defense, and so the blockout responsibilities are being lost by the Buffalo. Yeah, and that's already three offensive rebounds for Samuel because of that. Javon Ruffin has come in. Handley with it now. Ruffin with it. And they swing it around. Hadley will try to penetrate, does, fires, and a foul. Penetration is always a good thing. <laughs> it, well, it does. It creates fouls, as we see there. Hadley on the drive gets you to the free throw line. Obviously gets you shots at the rim. Dan, you just mentioned it creates offensive rebounds. Penetration, very important. Well, that is an impressive-looking nose guard there, don't you think? Daniel picked up his second, that is. I've had people recommend to me that I wear something like that. I think it's more to just cover my face. Well, they just they wanted a bag. We want to remind you to get complete coverage of the NCAA Division I Women's Tournament. All that action on NCAA.com. Bradley at the line. From St. Paul, Minnesota. He was a terrific high school wide receiver. First, we've seen that with Roddy, who played in the Mountain West Conference, now in the NBA. We've seen that with others. From that area, there's a three-point shot missed by Clayton, retrieved by Cody Williams. And ahead it goes to Ruffin. Ruffin was getting a screen maneuvers. Eight and a half to go in the first half. Pouf with the defense. The drive inside and a good one. And again, Colorado just attacking, attacking, attacking. 14 points in the paint. This will be their fourth and fifth three throw attempts. They're really doing a nice job keeping the ball moving. They don't really allow the Florida defense the chance to take a breath and set. And Williams, this is his fifth game back, coming back after an ankle injury. And he simply has not played very well in those the four previous games, and that's his first point of this game. And I'm telling you, they could be a different team if he becomes an offensive difference maker. Well, yeah, because during the year, Dan, I mean, he averaged 12 points a game off the bench, shooting 55%. So if he could get back to that level, that gives him a whole nother look. And he's a, he's a 41% three-point shooter, but he's missed all of his three-point attempts since coming back from the injury. Colorado Buffaloes to within two on a 10-2 run. Condon was thinking about one from outside. With the work right here, Richard, another three. Leaping rebound by Hadley. And Ruffin. And in to Lampkin. Condon will defend bulldozing inside Lampkin can't get the first fighting for it inside retrieved right there by Hauk the other way look at the try Kugel Riley Kugel flies in Matt Lampkin really struggled to take that shot he was surrounded he's a pretty good passer he needed to pass that one out and since he didn't pass it it became a turnover basically and Flora's really done a nice job converting the turnover uh, he can bully you down low but he's a below the rim big guy and so Florida's size, even when he gets deep position, can create some problems. O'Brien inside, finds the big man, Lampkin, he's got six. He's got that low line drive shot in there. Look at that drive, piercing Clayton for two. Well, the pace of this game is incredible. I mean, it's just going up and down, and Florida especially, really, really pushing the pace. Colorado, a very good shooting team. 49% from the floor. There's a turnover. Two on one. Hold on! And Kugel is going up. The pass.
Massive hit errant by Richard. And it's Colorado's ball. They were thinking about a pretty play here on the alley-oop. But the runway was not open for Kugel. Four-point game here. Moments ago, Andy Katz caught up with the 14-year head coach of Colorado, Tad Boyle. Tad, defensively, prior to the last couple of possessions, what were you guys doing so well to prevent them from getting inside here? Uh, I don't know if we've done any well defensively. I mean, they're, they're, they're coming down. We have no sense of urgency on, on the defensive side of the, the ball. We really don't. We've, we got uh, Richard got three for three threes. We know he's a shooter on the scouting report. I mean, Clayton just gets in for an uncontested layup. We got to get better defensively. We got a sense of urgency, obviously, right there, back there. Thank you. Thank you. Dan Boyle was uh, raised in Greeley, Colorado. He was the high school player of the year in the state of Colorado. Now he's back coaching the Buffaloes. Back home, Ruffin on top, Hadley on the wing, Simpson. Three, good! Wow. Well, he's one of the top three-point shooters in the country, shooting almost 45%. Colorado leads the Pac-12 in all three shooting categories. That's how good they are. Clayton trying to drive. Pullen takes aim. His three is out. Rebound, Hadley. Well, you're right, Kevin. And Colorado in the top 12 nationally. Yes. In field goal percentage, three-point percentage, and free throw percentage. Roughing off the mark there. Rebound, Alex Condon. Ahead, Pullen gets it. Finds himself doubled, and on top it goes. They'll reset with Clayton. Condon. He's defended by Hadley. Good fake by Clayton. Swinging it around. It's a pull-in. Shot from three. That's really good ball movement by Florida. Colorado did a nice job running out on the three-point shooters, but the ball kept moving, and finally they couldn't recover. I agree, but I'm not sure why Colorado needs to be going down on the post there. I think they can handle Condon down low on their own. Spinner by Hadley taking it in. And a Gator foul on that play. See, it all starts with the pass out of the double team, which puts you in rotation. I'm not sure they need to be double teaming Condon in the low post. Well, and I would agree with you. Now, Condon, he had a mismatch down there. Hadley's trying to play him, but... I think I'd rather have Condon shooting the two than Pullen shooting the three. And Hadley's actually a very good low post defender. Will Richard picked up that foul. And there's another foul called on top. And that goes on Zion Pullen. First team all SEC. Well, and that's going to put Simpson at the line where he's an 88% free throw shooter. This guy very, very efficient. We talked about it. I mean, 47% from the floor, 45 from three, and 88 at the free throw line. Well, he's one of five players in Division I with 500 points this season, 150 rebounds, 150 assists, and the only one in the Pac-12. Watch CBS Sports HQ for free 24-7 coverage of the big dance and all the biggest moments in sports. Catch tournament highlights, picks, previews, recaps, and much more. Download the CBS Sports app to watch today. Simpson gets it. And a Florida team that has attempted 881 free throws on the season has yet to attempt a free throw in this first half. Well, and they're 2-6, and six, Dan, when they shoot fewer than 20 free throws. Clayton 3, Condon rebound, retrieved by Richard Del Reset. Oh, 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 that is a big uh-oh. Condon is down in the left ankle. Well, they're depleted on the front line. They cannot afford an injury to Condon. Hamlodton is out. He comes down and just turns his ankle. He yes, he sure lands did. on Lampkin's foot. Mm. And hopefully it's just one of those where you roll your ankle and you lace up your shoe a little bit tighter and you can go. Well, you're talking about how tough he is. His dad played pro Australian rules football. This kid does. He trains with that national team. But he was a good rules football player, Australian rules football player, as you talked about. As a young kid, just saw Hanlockton over there on the bench trying to uh, give moral support to his team. Uh, I've seen Australian rules football. That is just legalized violence is all that is. <laughs> you got to be tough to play that game. <laughs> Condon stays. Good feed to Clayton. He'll take a move. Hope 
Trying to get it down low to Richard, who didn't cut. It's well, a turnover for the Gators. That, that, to me, is Richard's fault. When you start that back cut, you've got to finish yes. it. You cannot stop on that cut and come back. That was a good look by Houck. That's a mistake on Richard's part, and I think he knows it. Good feed. Backdoor drive, lunging in. Can't get it to go, No Hadley. Colorado, a great cutting team. They score a lot on passes into the paint. Richard makes a move. Condon down low, but look at all kinds of congestion. Look at the traffic. Tap. Nice defense by the Buffaloes. Well, Condon, that, I mean, he just found himself trapped down there. There's nothing he can do about it. He gets the rebound. He does a nice job maintaining his pivot foot, but he just can't get out of there. You know what you don't see as much, though, anymore, Dan, in those kind of situations that we used to see all the time is throw the ball off the defense and try to get it out of bounds. That used to be a play that everybody had, you know, that they would make, and now you rarely, if ever, see it. You figure they do that in Australia? <laughs> I don't know. In Australian rules football, he would just knock somebody over. Intercepted down low and picked off, and here comes Kugel. Tell you what, Kugel is some kind of athlete. He was a top five high school player at Dr. Phillips High School in Orlando. Maneuvering in. Fouled as he fired. Well, that's just a situation. They're playing in transition off of that turnover. And he is able to create the foul because the defense simply isn't set. Kugel's got three steals. He's been effective at the line now. He's a 69% free throw shooter. That average is a steal a game and, and plays only 23 minutes a game. But before he went to the line, he looked up at the scoreboard and, you know, watched himself on the replay. Here is the first four to free throw. Couch or courtside? Refresh your fandom with the delicious Coke Zero Sugar. Is it the best Coke ever? Stan, why don't you try and decide? <laughs> well, the best Coke ever is Diet Coke. So let's not debate that. I, you know, I know we, you know, those are spots we have to do. But Stan, Stan. Just, Diet yeah. Coke is the best Coke ever. Look at the same company. They're going to make money either way. <laughs> <laughs> Hadley with it. Approaching four to play in the first half. Simpson inside to Williams, back to Hadley, a triple. Well, that was two good passes there leading to that. The pass into the paint from Simpson to Williams, and then Williams under control, kicking it out for the three. Samuel, good pass down low. It was finally lost, so, but then thrown away. Lampkin got the loose ball. Williams glides the other way. Lampkin in stride, spin, oh, the big man! Too big to be doing that, but by goodness, we just sucked. What footwork there from the big guy. Kugel wheeling inside, a floater on the fly, Lemkin the rebound. And the outlet goes to Simpson. Going down low, Javon Handley, defended by Pullen. Silva back in the game, got the screen, looking to feed and finds Handley. Shot clock at nine, tried a dangerous pass, that's the result. The galloping Samuel. The trailing Kugel finishes it off well for the Gators. Wow, Kugel is an athlete and boy, he gets sure down is. the floor in transition and you can't get your defense set. He is a dangerous guy. Eight no. points already. Lampkin. Doubled, cutting Hadley, cut it, foul! I'll tell you what, Lampkin, great footwork on the play before, and he is an excellent passer on the interior. Look at this pass to the cutting Hadley for the basket. Welcome back to Indianapolis. Be ready for anything. Don't miss the explosive action of All Elite Wrestling's Wednesday Night Dynamite. Live, 8 o'clock on TBS. Well, we're seeing it from uh, Colorado. This is an elite shooting team. We talked about it. 
And already here in the first half, 56% from the floor, 60% from three. They don't shoot a lot. They're only three for five, and they haven't missed a free throw. Lambkin, you just saw him right there. He, when he came out of high school in Texas, was the number nine player in the state. He played at TCU for a handful of years. Now he finishes up at Colorado. He is a senior. At the free throw line here is Javon Handley. First four against Boise State, a couple points, 37 minutes. And late in the season, Handley was a Pac-12 player of the week. He had a really nice couple games strung together he did for the Buffaloes. Well, he's one of those guys that just does a lot of things, really works defensively. He's guarding Clayton right now for his leading scorer, who's a guard. He can do it all. Pullen took that shot and foul is called. It goes on to Silva. And that'll put Zion Pullen at the free throw line. Played early college basketball at UC Riverside. He was three-time All-Big West Conference. He's from College Park High School in Pleasant Hill. And finishing up with the Florida Gators. Well, Coming Dan, up. I'm sorry, Kevin. Dan mentioned it in the open. He gets to the line a lot, almost six times a game, which for a point guard in college basketball is a lot. Well, the controversy going on right here, if they did call that foul on De Silva, the Colorado bench is a little upset by that. They thought the foul should have been on number two, not number 23. It's Hadley and De Silva, and they switch him on defense. Here's Simpson. Lightning quick. Williams, a dynamic player when healthy. Down low they go. Look at the silver. Grind his way and find the deuce. He's got seven. Aberdeen is back in. Condon is on top. Gators trying to penetrate. And he's going down low. Met by Lampkin. The hook will drop. Pretty shot. That's a nice job by Condon. Lampkin didn't guard him, and so the way you make a guy guard you is you dribble the ball at the basket, and Lampkin got there much too late. I'll tell you what, these two freshman big kids for Florida, Houck and Condon, are going to be outstanding players. It's Lampkin. Nice feed, but dropped inside. Simpson could not find the handle. With the turnover in Aberdeen racing the other way. Finding Pullen. He's right inside. Williams got him there, coming up on ATMs here at the half. Get all the scores and highlights, plus the latest NCAA tournament news. All coming up on AT&T at the half. And Dan Williams of the Buffaloes just picked up his second foul. Well, he got trapped that time, and Florida's done a much, much better job here recently taking the ball to the basket. Now, as he said, they're a very effective free-throw shooting team, and if they drive the ball to the basket and get fouls, obviously that creates some issues for Colorado, who's not a deep team. Not at all. Really, neither of these teams are now after the injury to Hanlogged, and there's not a lot of depth on either of these squads. From the free-throw line, attempts at the line, a nice indicator for the Gators as you try to read in the future. 20 or more free-throw attempts a game. They're 22-5. and five. But anything less than that, they struggle, struggle. Five of six so far. And they have a one-point lead with 62 seconds to play in the first half. Some people thought New Mexico, Dan, might play a little bit better. They struggle today and lose. Colorado, Florida here. Ten against a seven. And our game summary with uh, 102 to play in the first half. And we were just talking at the break, Kevin. We got a 42 to 41 game, and we don't have a single player in double figures. Fifteen different guys have scored. Things very spread out. Well, everybody who plays, who has played for Florida has scored, and only Ruffin, Javon Ruffin for Colorado, has not scored. Everybody else has. Aberdeen is on Simpson. Aberdeen is a terrific defender on the ball. One of the best I've seen. Colorado shooting 58% from the floor. Hauk is going to defend the Silva, and he has a spinner inside, which will drop with ease. A gentle shot. De Silva with nine. He is really skilled and has such a nice touch. That is a difficult matchup for Hauk. Oh, yeah. Five to Silva. And great footwork. He's such a solid, fundamental guy. Aberdeen three for the Gators. 
This I is, really like Denzel Aberdeen. This is a uh, Florida team. Remember, they were one for 13 shooting threes in that SEC game against Auburn. Here come the Buffaloes who played in the first four a couple nights ago. Second game in the tournament right now. Final seconds. Simpson drives over half. Good! Beautiful shot to beat the buzzer. And we are tied. What a first half. Ten lead changes. And this is just one of your, this is just an outstanding point guard, knowing that he's got a mismatch, but that is a really tough shot. Well, that was great defense by Howe. There's nothing more he could do there. Andy, take it away. All right, Todd, we got a tie game. How would you assess the pace right now for the Florida Gators? I'll take it. Obviously, we, got, we scored 45. We just got to guard a little bit better. If you like offense, this is your game, apparently. I think both teams are playing really well, playing really clean games and uh, making a lot of shots. All right, so how do you guard better? We got to do a better job keeping out of the post. I think Lampkins bothered us with those deep catches. Some of their twos have been tough. Um, we just got to keep it out of the paint a little better and make them make tough shots over hands. But uh, if we can score 45 in the second half, I like our chances. All right, thanks, Tom. Yep, thanks, Andy. He's the second youngest coach in a Power 5 conference and back at Duke's John Shire. Todd Golden and his Gators are tied with Colorado at the half. We'll take you to AT&T at the half after these messages. You're watching the NCAA Men's Basketball Championship. Second half, about a minute away as we take a look at AT&T first half statistics. I guess the one thing, guys, that stands out, the efficiency. The efficiency with both these teams has been off the charts. Stan, let's begin with you in Colorado. What do you see? Well, again, it's all about defense, so they've got to get back. They've got to do a better job keeping Florida off the glass, and they've got to continue to keep them off the free throw line. Well, Stan, the one thing I'll say is nothing has been about defense in this first half. <laughs> and the, the same could be said for Florida. You've got to tighten it up defensively. And I think for the Gators, they've got to get to the free throw line. They've only made six trips there in the first half. And I think they've got to do a better job attacking Colorado. Colorado, they've got nobody with two personal fouls except Cody Williams. Andy uh, Katz, it has been so great having you on the sideline. What do you have? Well, I just walked back with Tad, and I said, first of all, what'd you stress in there? He says, well, defense. You've got to guard somebody. Somebody's got to play some defense. Offensively, though, he's very pleased. 14 assists on 17 field goals. But, uh, yeah, that was the main thing to stress in the locker room. Defense. Someone play it, please. <laughs> But I'm enjoying the offense. I well, be coaches, honest. coaches, they're obsessed with defense. Let's, let's have offense. Well, look, I'm one of those guys who was obsessed, obsessed with defense. But I will say, like, I don't want to watch one of those 21 to 19 games at the half, to be quite honest. This has been good basketball. And, Dan, you said it. There's a lot of guys making plays at both ends of the floor. By the way, on that note, this is the highest scoring first half so far in this year's tournament. Now we're, you know, about three quarters of the way through with uh, another two games here tonight and all over the country. But after yesterday and today, so far, a lot of scoring here and Florida opens up with it. Let's see if they can maintain this pace. Cotton quickly double. They blitz him. Samuel inside. And he puts it over to Silva for two. That's a tough shot. For a big guy. That shot is tough. Great touch there by Samuel. I still do not like doubling Condon. I just don't think he warrants that, and then you leave people open. Samuel's got Lampkin pushed off, trying to uh, cordon off areas in the corner. Simpson with a three. Rebound chased and retrieved by Luke O'Brien. Well, you're not going to get many more wide open shots than that. Hadley inside. With a spin. By the way, that offensive rebound, that was Colorado's first of the night. Kevin, there's a lot of interesting stats from the first half, and that was one of them, that Colorado scores 45 points in the half and gets no offensive rebounds. Now, of course, to get an offensive rebound, you have to miss a shot, and they didn't miss very many of them. Well, they didn't because, as we said earlier, they're one of the elite shooting teams in the country. And this is one of the things they do. They were 14 of 15 the other night from the free throw line in that play-in game, and they're 9 for 9 tonight. 
Hadley. Here's Hadley at the line. I mentioned before he was a great high school football player. He played at Creighton Durham High School in the Twin Cities. Kind of like Jalen Suggs, or Jalen Suggs. Now in the NBA, but here at Gonzaga, he was Mr. Basketball and Football in the state of Minnesota. A tough double. It's Clayton getting free. Walter Clayton puts it in, a starter every game this season. Uh, he is a very good pull-up shooter when he can get into the mid-range. Well, both of these teams have so many offensive weapons. Hadley on the wing. Lampkin down low. In that first four, he had 13 against Boise State. Corner, three, good! Put up and in, Luke O'Brien, our senior from Littleton. Well, that's great ball movement out of the double team on Lampkin, making the extra pass, getting that ball to the weak side. Samuel got some speed, and Samuel takes it down the lane and goes ramming into O'Brien. Or De Silva. It was De Silva with the foul. Moments ago, they got this nice corner shot by O'Brien. That's great ball movement. Well, Clayton left O'Brien in the corner and tried to sneak up behind Lampkin. And Lampkin just got the ball out of there, and quick ball movement results in a wide-open shot. So here's Tyree Samuel, 56% free-throw shooter. He just has uh, put together the best season of his college career. He had 11 double-doubles, Stan, and that was number two in the Southeastern Conference. Well, he's really a force inside. He and Lampkin both are now. Lampkin is not guarding Samuel. The Silva is. We'll see if that changes at any point. The Silva's got two fouls now. They may have to change that if the Silva picks up another one. It's the Silva. Condon is on him. Two minutes gone in the second half. The winner will play Marquette. Lampkin didn't get it. Pass a little bit low. Clayton. Samuel in motion down the lane, bumping into O'Brien. That was a really tough pass by Simpson for it was. Lampkin to handle. You know, if you're a big guy, you're going to the basket, you're looking for the ball about chest height, and that was down below his hip. I, I, I'll go as far as to say there's probably no one who could have caught that pass. <laughs> O'Brien picks up the foul. Samuel will spin one up. Lampkin will retrieve the loose ball. And he jumped about an inch and a half to pull that one down. But he's got great hands. Simpson, left him. Oh. He is like a defensive end, barreling down that lane. Inside, driving, pretty play. Will Richard. Well, he's Florida, got 10. Yeah, Kevin, Florida doesn't let you relax. You uh -oh. score, that ball gets inbounded, and they're on the attack. That was deflected. But retrieved by Colorado. Clayton got a hand on it. Inside Lampkin with the whistle. You're right, he's got good hands, Debbie Lampkin. My he goodness. does. Foul here goes on Tyree Samuel. Well, here here it is. Three. Here's that finish. And that ball gets inbounded, and they're right back up, and Richard takes it to the hole. Well, Richard started the game by making three threes, and we haven't heard from him much recently. So there goes Samuel with three fouls. Thomas Houck comes in, the freshman from Pennsylvania and they got Condon in there he's a freshman so two big freshmen big man for the Gators Lampkin look at him spin inside lost the ball picked up by Hadley and oh. rather inside it was picked up by Clayton who splits the D takes it in and retrieved in there and Florida keeps it alive Condon Forcing the issue, bumping into Lampkin on the doorstep. Well, if he can get that close, then Lampkin is not going to jump up and block his shot. That was really a nice job maneuvering by Condit. Yeah, and look, Lampkin is not a guy who gets off the floor very well. Lampkin's got to meet him earlier there and not let him get that deep, Dan. Tristan De Silva, grinding his way for the open shot. He is short. Nice defense there. Richard supplied it. And they got Clayton the other way. Condon thinking about it. And the bench is yelling at him to shoot it. Richard sets up on a 15-footer. Condon the rebound and swarmed by black jerseys. Outside, Richard three, no. Lunging rebound inside by O'Brien. The other way comes Simpson. The hesitation, jab step, try, foul. 
Well, Simpson, another guy who gets to the line a lot, over five times a game. Great hesitation. Gets to the rim. Gators by two. Clayton picked up his foul right there. Number three. Well, Florida, halfway through the first half, led by ten. But now we've got a close game. Lampkin in the middle for the Buffaloes. One of the reasons why they came back. Well, he's very good around the basket. I mean, he's not a jump shooter, and he's not an athletic guy. He's a power guy, but, boy, he's got great hands. He's a good passer, and when he gets close to the basket, he's just hard to deal with. He played for TCU last year. He played in 24 games. He had 19 starts. He averaged six points and six rebounds. Now he's a Buffalo, and Lampkin this year played and started in every game with 10 points and seven rebounds. At the free throw line, they've got... K.J. Simpson, who is a pretty good free throw shooter himself at about 87%. I mean, look at the balance for Colorado. Simpson's got 11 now. Hadley and Lampkin 10 each. The Silva 9 and O'Brien 8. Pullen brings it up. And we're playing zone now. And that's rare. You don't see a lot of zone out of Colorado. Chad Boyle changing things up. Aberdeen has come in with the ball. Nice drive inside with the 40. Will Richard dives for two. You know, one of the reasons you play a zone is to try to prevent that dribble penetration, but De Silva went for a steal, and that gave Richards an opening. And we talked about the mask that Hadley is wearing. Got hit in the and, face. And that's fine, fight. but if you get hit in the face, even that mask isn't going to help you. Oh, gosh. That hurts. Andy, what do you see? Well, he actually had been cleared to not wear it anymore. But he told the team that he keeps getting hit in the face, just like we just saw. So he wanted to keep wearing it. It's a specially designed mask that was done by a group in North Carolina. This happened way back on January 24th when he got hit at Washington in the face that caused that face fracture. So hopefully he's going to be all right. But obviously he got a little dinged up by getting hit in the face again. De Silva three. What a stroke. And De Silva's put in 12. A nice flare screen there by Luke O'Brien. And the rebound by K.J. Simpson. Here come the Buffaloes with a one-point lead. They've led by as many as three, and DeSilva's got it. Look at the spin. Look at the shot, but it will not go. That's a nice move, though. It we was. just saw him hit a three, and now he's posting up. This guy's versatile. He's unselfish. I missed that. Right, but he's so good with that. Like, oh, man. my gosh. Zion Pullen, Aberdeen. On top, it's Houck. Condon, he'll take the three. And the rebound once again by Tristan De Silva. Cat 12, second team inside. Lampkin pounding his way into Condon, who knocks it away. And De Silva got it back. Or rather, it was Lampkin getting it back and putting it in. Yeah, and Lampkin just bullied him underneath, and which created space for the offensive rebound, even though he missed the shot. That's a tough physical matchup for Condon down there. Pullen. De Silva on him. Condon on the doorstep. Too strong. Pullen gets the ball. Sets up and Aberdeen on the wing. Lampkin will defend Condon. Nice shot. Good play. Patience. That's a big time move for the freshman down there. And he was calling for the ball vehemently. He wanted it in a close game here in the NCAA tournament. Look at the speed of Simpson taking it right into the heart of the Gator defense. This summer, the Targaryens, the Iron Throne, and the biggest show on TV are back. Season two of the HBO original series, House of the Dragon, premieres June 16th, only on Max. Felici, part of that, Dan, as you were telling me. <laughs> Simpson at the line. Simpson. As you take a look at the masked Javon Hanley, Simpson from West Hills, California, was the California Federation Division I Player of the Year. The CIF Division I Player of the Year. He was a good one. Well, I played in the CIF. And you were a good one. I was not the Player of the Year. <laughs> <laughs> Colorado, the top free throw shooting team in the Pac-12, 14 of 14 from the line. Pullen's got it. 
The screen by Samuel back in, but playing with three fouls. Hauk, Samuel, he's got position, but look at the swarm of defenders. And they were gambling and trying to punch it away, and a foul called on the Gators. Simpson almost no, Simpson timed that correctly. Yep. Because he snuck in from behind, and I think he thought Simpson was, uh, Samuels was going to try to dribble the ball. And usually if you dribble it, the referees will let you take it. But if you're holding on to it like that, very rarely is the guard able to strip it from the big guy without a foul. Simpson picked up his second. Peter's got that foul out of that defense. Out of bounds it goes. It's off for Florida, and Colorado's got it. Simpson didn't get it before. He got it that time, though. Simpson, great anticipation. He's got great hands. Uh, averages just under two steals a game. This guy truly does it all. I mean, he is a highly skilled guy. Gators turn it over for the first time in 11 minutes with Hadley on top. And defended by Pullen. Now the drive by Luke O'Brien. You know, very quietly, O'Brien has had a pretty good game. Colorado by five right now. Yeah, four of four for O'Brien. Hulk. Kugel on the wing. Samuel in the middle. Last time he got that foul out of that defense of Colorado. It's a drive right here. And a pull-up shot. Pullen can't get it. That's a great block out by Hadley. It really was, but that ball should have been passed back into Samuel. O'Brien, what a play! Timeout! Colorado's on a 6 nothing run! Every starter for the Buffaloes in double figures. A fake and a drive. Back 12, Colorado with their biggest lead here, seven points. 65-58 now, thrilling drives presented by Nissan and turned in moments ago by Luke O'Brien. And this is, is, I mean, it's a transition situation, but he gets to the basket, Kevin, and there's nobody anywhere close to him. By the way, this is one of these... Uh, Terrific teams from the first four since the bracket expanded to 68 teams in 2011. A first four team has made it to the second round every year except one. And we got Grambling coming up. They won in Dayton. Colorado won in Dayton. Let's see how this one turns out. Aberdeen's got it for the Gators. Well, there's a lot of time left oh, in this absolutely. game. And Florida is an elite offensive team. And they are the sixth highest scoring team in the league. But if you would have told me coming in combat, Colorado was going to outscore them at the line by eight, then I would have given the big edge to Colorado. Samuel with 11. But well, Lampkin is on the bench, and besides, he's not guarding Samuel anyway. So what they're really shot. taking advantage. Right? What a shot! He's got three threes and 15 points. He that guy is so good. It's been very impressive. Driving right here. Beautiful play. Walter Clayton takes it to the hole. That's the play they needed right there. Down by six and a free throw coming up. And a foul called on De Silva. Number three on Tristan De Silva. And then there's beauty by Clayton at the other end. Oh, and here is our game summary. Colorado on 24 made baskets have had 20 assists with great efficiency. The efficiency is off the charts. 60% from the floor, 67% from three, and haven't missed a free throw. The leading scorer, Walter Clayton, puts that up and in. Last year, Clayton was the number one free throw shooter in all of college basketball at 95%. And De Silva, with those three personal fouls, has gone to the bench. Let's see what kind of a difference, if any, that makes. Lampkin, Samuel knocked it away. It's a tie-up. Condon was on top of him. Samuel poked it away. Colorado will keep the ball here. Well, this is... Lampkin called a timeout. 
as he was hitting the deck. Smart move by Lampkin in a five-point game. We've had 13 lead changes. We've had six ties. The Buffaloes have led by as many as eight. The Gators have led by as many as ten. Uh, Kevin, they just called that timeout, even though the possession error was in the favor of Colorado. And so I'm not, he's going to have to call another oh, timeout. Another no. right there. Five-second no. violation. Well, also notice on that five-second violation, Simpson, the point guard's inbounding. Florida puts their center, Condon, on the ball. It makes it tough for a smaller guy like Simpson to see the floor and inbound. Great defense there by Florida. Clayton got the screen, tailed by Simpson on top. It's Kubel. It's a three. Rebound Condon, a good one. As he was being roughed up inside, looked like O'Brien may have picked up the Colorado foul. He did his second. See Condon on the ball. Nobody comes to the strong side nope. there. Yeah. No one comes to the ball. <laughs> and that's what Tad Boyle's very upset about. You saw the picture there very clearly. That whole side of the court is wide open. That's where he's trying to throw the ball. Nobody showed up. Aberdeen's got it defended by Hadley. Condon is on top and Lankin. Back to Aberdeen, a three. Rebound inside. And that's not really Aberdeen's game. He's only made 11 threes on the year. KJ Simpson the other way. Dancing over there on Clayton. Cody Williams has come in for the Buffalo. As O'Brien takes it down low into Aberdeen. Cross court, Simpson drives. Porter on the fly. They do such a good job getting the ball from one side of the court to the other. Yeah, they do as good a job of that, Dan, as anybody in the country moving the ball. And they got a great matchup over there. Simpson against Clayton. Samuel, he found the cutter Kugel, but he could not complete it. Both these teams played in their conference tournament finals. Hadley with the head of steam. Oh, rejected. Knocked away. Condon was in there also flying was Kugel. Condon picked up the foul. That was Kugel who got it. Kugel's a terrific athlete. Well, he is. I don't know where the foul was on that play. I know he came down hard, but it doesn't look to me like it's foul. Well, wow. How about Kugel getting off what the floor? Good my heaven. Goodness. Yeah, he is a terrific athlete. But Colorado <laughs> at the free throw line. First of all, to be at the line now seven more times than Florida, which Florida wins the games by getting to the free throw line and then haven't missed all day. There we go. I jinxed him. Well, you're just a reporter. You're not a dealer in superstition. You're just you're just reporting the facts. Samuel Condon under 10 to go. Quick fire right there. Three. Walter Clayton. And Clayton is a guy who they can really need to get going on the offensive end. He can put up a lot of points quickly. He's made the most threes for the Gators. Well, when he doesn't have to put it on the floor, he is an excellent shooter. Foul Williams. Oh, they're going to call that a good basket. Yes, they are. And I like that, that they called it a good basket. There's too many plays in college where they doesn't. Todd Golden very, very upset. And pretty play by Williams. That basket should not have counted, Dan, by college rules. So Todd Golden, in my opinion, is right on that. But Clayton knew he was overmatched there. Tried to flop. I'm glad they didn't give him the call. Clayton picked up his fourth. Williams at the line. It's a Google rebound. But that really complicates things. They need Clayton's offense, and now he's got four personal fouls. I'm not sitting in for long. The bottom line is, if he doesn't play another seven or eight minutes, you're probably not winning. Condon, 15-footer. Bouncing around on the floor, diving Hadley. He gets it off to Simpson as he flies the other way for the Buffalo. Great transition defense, though, by Florida. Lampkin into Condon. Lampkin puts it through. The big guy just ran down and got right on top of the basket. There was nothing Condon could do. Great pass. Lampkin's got 14. And Lampkin runs the floor very well for a guy his size. It's Pullen working here on Simpson. That's great defense by Simpson. Richard. O'Brien's on him. 
Samuel's got the ball. Defended down low by Hadley. Here's a shot by Richard. Three! What a shot! Big time triple. Richard's got 15 points. Six point games. Gators making a move. And 8.43 in the second half. I'm not sure if you saw Jack Oakey with Oakland hit those 10 threes against Kentucky, but it was something to watch. Well, I thought it was more impressive, Kevin, that he got up 20 threes. <laughs> I've seen guys hit 10 threes where they go 10 for 13, 10 for 14. You know how hard it is to get up 20 threes in a game? We'll have a lot of teams in this tournament who don't give up 20 threes in a game. Here, are you saying he had the green light? Well, listen, Greg Campy has been an under-the-radar great coach for a long time, and one of the things he's done, he recruits shooters and empowers them to shoot the ball. It's Simpson curling. Hadley with it. Down low, Lampkin saved it. Eight and a half to go. Hadley making a move on Samuel and takes it to the hole. What a great save by Lampkin. Yeah. Not only getting that ball, but... He's nimble enough to keep it in bounds. Colorado has made eight consecutive shots. Kugel, three, pulls it. And that's the way Florida can come back in this game. They can really shoot the three. Well, Kugel only a 31% three-point shooter, but now he's made back-to-back -back threes, and we've got a five-point game. Colorado, for the game, is shooting 63% from the floor. Lampkin and Condon. Chiseling, driving, scoring, Lampkin. Well, I think they counted the basket. The foul is on Condon. Did they call a technical foul on somebody? No, I don't see a technical foul, but Todd Golden is again for the second time in the last couple of minutes absolutely incensed. Teed him up. The Florida coach just got teed up. 7.43 to go. Buffalo is on top by seven. A potential for a big turnaround in this game here. Colorado already with the seven point lead. And on the right side of your screen, Todd Golden is right here talking to the official. And as the official walks away, Todd Golden leans down and, you know, claps his hands together in a gesture of anger. And the official's happy to come over and talk to him, but you cannot make that kind of a display. Andy, what do you see? Actually, right before that, during the mini timeout, the official had come over to Todd Golden, tell him to calm down. Todd said to him, I'm fine. Then what you just described, Dan, happened where he got that sort of second warning. Then they had to tee him up. I just was listening to the huddle. He told the team, that one's on me. Javon Hadley at the free throw line for the Colorado Buffaloes. I'm surprised. I mean, Hadley's a good free throw shooter, but Simpson's a better one. I'm surprised Hadley's shooting the technical, but... That's why Tad Boyle is sitting over there, and I'm sitting over here because he picked the right guy and he made them both, and now Lampkin's got a chance to put him up 10. Well, now with the rule, you get you shoot the technical foul, and then the game picks up where it left off, and where it left off was Lampkin going to the line to shoot the and one. He they counted that basket and called the foul that upset Todd Gold. And that was on Condon, Dan, who picked up his third. Let's go to Gene Stewart for our rules analyst. Gene, walk us through this. In tough situations, guys. Look, when you had the play down on the other end that the official, or the coach naturally wasn't happy with that. But then one of his partners, as we see a good hoop and one here on this end, one of his partners now is talking to the coach during the timeout to kind of let him vent, diffuse the situation. When that calling official now puts himself in an intimate conversation, you're running the risk of rising that temperature again, which apparently happened. And now the coach's frustration boils to another point and they assess him a technical foul. A lot of times there, let one guy then defuse the coach, stay, keep your distance, and then let's play basketball again. You know, there, there's a little responsibility, in my opinion, on both parts, fellas. Good stuff, Gene. Thank you. Pullen got three, and they go inside. Count it. Foul. Simpson slipped inside. Colorado has made ten consecutive.
shots. Well, great play coming out of the timeout. Back screen here, pulling. And then the cut to the rim and a tremendous pass by Lampkin, and he gives the vision signal there. <laughs> Cohen was trying to defend and slipping in there to get that with Simpson. And what a pass by Lampkin. With a guy all over him, right. Kevin. But, uh, I mean, he's a big guy. He leaned that big body around and found him. If I'm Todd Golden, I'm getting Clayton back in the game. Look, you can't stop him. You're going to need as much scoring on the floor as you can get on the floor now. Cohen into Simpson. Shove in, try right there. No good by Houck. There had already been the foul call on Simpson, and that's going to be his fourth. So that could be a major factor right here. They do not want to play without K.J. Simpson going down the stretch. Simpson number four, Stan just said, 10-point lead for the Buffaloes. Now each team, Dan, is led by 10. Well, I think that what happened over here, Kevin, is Eric Curry's whistle didn't work. Nobody stopped. And so now he's changing whistles over there. Yeah, he's getting one from the uh, other referee over there at the table, one that'll this, work. The standby, James Hicks is the standby. James Hicks, yep. And he gave, but every, nobody stopped. He blows the whistle, nobody stopped. Well, we see Pullen, who's been pretty quiet most of the day now. Last two times putting the ball on the floor and attacking. He's a terrific free throw shooter also. And now, this is crucial. He can cut it to eight here, and Colorado's going to have to play without K.J. Simpson for a while. And Simpson is the guy who dominates the ball. And so, you know, De Silva can handle the ball. They're going to have Cody Williams handle, and that Florida bench wants more pressure on Cody Williams. Here comes Cody Williams, the McDonald's All-America, working right now into pulling. Under seven to go. Well, even if Williams can handle the ball without turning it over, it's really going to be disruptive for the offense. Hadley had to adjust his mask in another foul. And that will go on Hulk. So that's fairly talented if you can adjust your mask on the dribble. That's pretty good. And they're going to be shooting two now the rest of the way. So the free throws in this game. Colorado, 19 of 21. Florida, 10 of 12. It's been a while since they had five players with 10 plus, but that's what they've got right here is Hadley nails the first. And I loved Florida's strategy there with Simpson out of the game. They had Kugel denying Tristan De Silva and making the other guys make plays, but Hadley able to get to the free throw line. Kugel got the miss. Pullen takes it the other way. Richard is in on top. Hauk and Samuel. And Richard. Here comes Kugel. Six and a half to go. Cohen in the handle. Look at the spinning move, but he can't get it to drop. The rebound by Hadley. That's a terrific move, though. And he's really getting aggressive right now. Clayton and Condon getting up off the bench, ready to come back in. Luke O'Brien with it. De Silva's on the wing. Lampkin down low. Cross court, Williams catches, drives inside. That's a big time move for the freshman right there. They just, Florida simply cannot stop Colorado at all. It's an 11 point lead in the biggest tonight for the Buffaloes, who just played in the first four a couple nights ago in Dayton. Kugel, rebound Williams. Off balance, kept his footing. Google is on him. That's pretty impressive to be able to maintain I the agree. ball while he's dribbling and being bounced around. Yeah, he got fouled twice. Samuel in there, knocked it away. Lampkin again, another try and swarmed and a foul. I mean, how long has it been, guys, since Florida's gotten a stop without fouling? But I, I don't think it's... I can't remember. <laughs> I, I mean, this is as... Good as I've seen a team play offensively in a long, long time. I mean, you look at their numbers right now. It's unbelievable. They're shooting 65% from the floor, 67% from three, and 87% at the free throw line. This is incredible. 18 for Lampkin. Also with five rebounds and five assists. What a performance. Hulk picked up the foul. Lampkin is at the line. 
we got a chance after this game that Colorado could come in on Sunday in the top 10 in the nation in field goal percentage, three point percentage, and free throw percentage. Well, and that's true, but there's five minutes and 23 seconds left in this game. They already have 90 points. 90 points, and Florida's got a long way to go, and it's not about this end of the floor. Yes, they've got a score, Pullen's which is a nice hard. move there. Pullen's trying to take over, but if they can't find a way to get a stop, obviously there's no way for them to get back in this game. Here they go with Hadley. Finds three to meet him. Lampkin on top. Hadley again. Shot clock is down to six. Williams got it. Made a move. They called a foul on they Condon. Trying to defend Lampkin. And Condon picks up his fourth. Lampkin is a load. And Condon is doing the best he can. And it's just frustrating there for Todd Golden. And, you know, we've mentioned it before, but Micah Handlogton is not available. He broke right. his leg in that SEC championship game. He had started 32 or 33 games for him. He was the starter, and Con Condon came in as his substitute. And they had, there he is right there. They had a really nice rotation going, and that has really hurt their depth here in a game with a big guy like Lampkin, who you know they're going to throw the ball to. 25 and 5. Well, I'm, I'm surprised right now that we're not seeing Samuel back in this game. Lampkin 5 of 5 from the stripe. He's the only guy that physically can match up with Lampkin. Florida has to find a way to get a stop. And they're running out of time to do it. It's Clayton. Lampkin comes out to the fan. A lot of traffic. Foul call. That's a bad foul right there. That's going to be a tough shot for Clayton over the top. Don't need to be fouling. Lampkin picks up number two. And they're fortunate that that call was against Lampkin because De Silva was right there as well. That's correct. And it was definitely lit. Yes, De Silva definitely. did a good job avoiding the contact. Was a little worried it looked like that the foul <laughs> might be on him. So here's Clayton last year, Iona. Was the Metro Atlantic Athletic Conference Player of the Year. He's from Lake Wales, Florida. You'd like to see if Florida has some way they can change up their defense down. Press, zone, something. Because even with K.J. Simpson on the bench, they have not been able to get a stop. And they do go with some pressure. But there's no way how can guard De Silva off the drip. Look at De Silva come in and thunder it down. I could see that coming in the backcourt. Pouch got wow. no chance to guard De Silva that far from the basket. Clayton inside. Hauk. I think they called a foul on O'Brien. They're going to count the basket. And Tad Boyle can't believe that that basket counted. But Hauk's a hard-working defender, but he's got no chance here. Well, you're trying to put pressure on the ball, but again, as we've seen the entire game, okay, he beats his man. How how gets beat, but there's nobody back there to help him out. No, the Florida defense has not been good. Three-point play by Thomas Houck. And they changed the matchup. They're going to put Pullen on to Silva. Well, except now Houck has to guard Hadley. <laughs> well, they're trapping here. De Silva to Hadley. And Tad Boyle's going to get Simpson back in the game against the pressure. A very smart move. But I would feel very comfortable as a coach versus pressure getting the ball into Silva's hands. It's into Lampkin. And I think deflected out of bounds it was by Condon. Timeout. 3.53 to go. The Colorado Buffaloes from Dayton to Indy and a chance to get to the round of 32. Bruce Pearl's got his Auburn team moving. And you see San Diego State waiting. Moments to go. Big play. De Silva. Well, he's hands are trying to pressure. And De Silva, I mean, you just can't guard him. From our AT&T connected cam. Beautiful view. 
Well, remember that. It was only six on the shot clock. And the last time Colorado was in this situation with Condon on the ball, they could not get the ball in bounds. Colorado has scored 16 of the last 18 possessions. Lampkin on top. They're crowding him. He'll fire. And they were going inside. That's a Colorado foul and a shove. And it goes on O'Brien. That is his fourth. And Colorado's shooting, so a double problem there because they're shooting two free throws. The clock doesn't even move. But finally, Colorado got to I mean, Florida got to stop. Well, Florida, they, they forced Lampkin to shoot the ball from the free throw line, and that's well out of his range. Well, interestingly, they got the ball into O'Brien. De Silva not even involved in the play, and Simpson inbound. And, you know, as great as Colorado's been, they're going to be up eight after this with 3.46 to go. There's still plenty of time in this game. Now, there is a lot of time left in the game. It's up ahead to De Silva. He's picked up by Clayton. And if you're Colorado, you don't want to be backing off right now. Uh -oh. Turnover. It goes back to the Gators. Colorado has scored 16 of their last 18 possessions, but their last two, not the case. Well, I didn't like that. They beat the press and had numbers. There's still too much time to pull the ball out, attack, and score. Here goes Pullen. On top. Oh, go. He threw it away. He threw it away right to Hadley. And it goes. Retaken by Pullen. Gators marching on the wing and picked up. And Clayton will pop a three. And picked up by Colorado. Even the try by Richard could not save it for the Gators. Well, that was a break for Colorado. That's one that Clayton will make a high percentage of the time. Yeah, you're right, especially going to that right hand. Florida trapping all over the place. I don't like Colorado's attack here. They're very passive. You've got numbers attack, and we know this is a tough matchup. Shot clock at seven. De Silva, Hulk defends. Shot clock at four. On top it goes. Simpson missing it all. Caught by Lampkin. Did he get it off the He did not. No. He did not. They're going to call that a shot clock violation. And a good call, I believe. And Florida's going to get it back. Down 94-86. The Florida press, after the dunk by De Silva has been good, they've gotten really passive. I think that that's the reason the press has done well, because Colorado has gotten passive. you got to beat that press and make them pay for pressing you. I, look, I see it at all levels. Teams who get a lead like this, they start trying to run the clock too early. You've got to keep us tacking and scoring in this game, especially against a team like Florida who can really score. There is a foul inside. It's on the Buffaloes. And Lampkin picks up number three. So Lampkin's got three. De Silva has three. O'Brien has four. Simpson has four. So Florida has been on the attack. Now, absolutely. And Colorado has gone passive here against the press. They've got to attack this press to score. They've got excellent playmakers. Now with Lampkin out, literally everybody on the floor capable of making plays, but get the ball to Simpson and to Silva, and if you've got numbers, attack to score. Cody Williams comes in for Lampkin. Walter Clayton is at the free throw line. Six-point game, Anthony Richardson, former Gator quarterback, now with the Colts, watching and cheering. Full court pressure. It can be suffocating, but they break it. Williams on the wing to Silva, going up on that time for Williams, and that is a foul. That pass should have been thrown higher to Cody Williams. You know, I'm all in favor of attacking. I just said that, but I think this is a dangerous pass. Well, it Condon. was because De Silva didn't take it at the defense. Condon got the foul, and Condon with his fifth. That's a tough call. It is. That is a tough call. Yeah, I didn't like it, Dan, because De Silva didn't take the ball at Condon. He let him play the rim and protect. I think De Silva, who I think is a great player, has gone passive here 
after they got the lead. I, I agree with you, Stan. I think the play right there is to drive the ball with Condon, and if he fouls you, then you go to the free throw line. Out, yes, absolutely. Condon now fouls out. Cody Williams at the line. These are big free throws now for the fresh. A lot of time still here. He's now three or four from the line, and you know, I feel silly to say this, but given the way everybody in Colorado shoots free throws, he's only shooting 72%. Oh, yeah. Hey, on that team, that's the guy you got to send to the line. These guys are all great free throw shooters. How <laughs> leaves. Kugel comes in with a look at Ann Boyle, the wife of Chad Boyle, the Colorado coach, trying to carve their second tournament win in one week. Williams. Two big ones. Well, I'll tell you what. Neither one of those came close to touching the rim either. It's Clayton. He's working on Hadley. Takes it right to the rack. How do you let him go to his right hand? The guy is almost exclusively right-handed. The silver. Hadley. The pressure is there. And the feed down court to Silva. And they control with Hadley. And William. See, they're playing keep away, though. That's you, you got to score points still. And now the clock is down to nine seconds. Yeah, I mean, you make it tough on yourself to score here. Simpson's got it. Into a thicket. And picked up inside to Silva with a big offensive rebound. And a shove and a foul called on Pullen. And Simpson was dribbling the ball for the Buffalo. Wow, they forced Colorado into a very difficult shot. If they can come up with that rebound, you've got a lot of time. That ball came off the front of the rim and straight down. And if it goes anywhere else, De Silva's not getting that rebound. That is a real break for Colorado. It sure was, and they've got a great guy at the free throw line here. Eight of eight now tonight. I mean, look, they're 27 for 30 at the line. But right now, who's ever on Walter Clayton, he does not get to go to his right hand, for God's sake. If he beats us, he's got to go off the dribble inside the line to his left, please. Samuel's got the miss. Stan, what you're talking about is a defensive thing, and we haven't seen very many defensive things in this game. Clayton tries to split and drive. Hey, look, guys, I can't take it over here as a coach. You switched on to the guy. Get over on his right hand. O'Brien just picked up his fifth foul. He is gone for the Buffaloes. And the other thing is, Cody Williams is standing right there. Move your feet and try to get in front of him. Don't just reach your hand and wave at him as he goes by. I just, look, and this isn't just tonight. This is on every level. It is tough to guard guys off the dribble, but you can't let them go to their strong hand every time down the floor. Javon Ruffin will check in. Clayton hits it. He has the last nine points for Florida. Well, we were talking about how he had to be in the game because he can score. Here we go. De Silva looking, feeding Williams back to De Silva. That's who I want with the ball, the Silver and Simpson. And Simpson's got it. And into Williams. That's a nice job by Florida collapsing on Williams. He had a lane to the basket for a brief second. Simpson doubled. De Silva on top. And Shot not even trying to attack. They got to now. It's Simpson with the move in the paint. Oh, what a play! That's what Simpson does. He makes big plays in clutch situations. Well, at least they made him go to his left. Three, Clayton, in and out. Rebound inside, picked up by Kugel. On top, pulling. On the wing, three, Clayton, called! Three point wow. game! What a shot! 29 for Walter Clayton. Timeout in Indy. The Gators are out of timeouts, but they've come to within three of the Colorado Buffaloes. Well, and they, they've got plenty of time here, Kevin. They don't have to foul, and I don't know if they want to foul the way Colorado's shooting the ball. But they can apply the pressure, and they can get a steal. Yeah, listen, I'm not fouling here. I, I'm not fouling. This team's too good at the free throw line. You're going to stay with that press. You know that Colorado is going to run the clock all the way to the end. 
but that's going to make them take a difficult shot. If you can get the rebound, sprint it up the floor, you probably can get a look at the three unless Colorado's smart enough to foul late in the game. And we've, already, we've already seen Colorado turn it over once against this pressure. The Silva will inbound. Full court pressure, as you can see, and it goes quickly right there to Ruffin. Doubled. It's intercepted. It's intercepted by Kugel. The Gators have it down by three. Pull it outside on top. It's Clayton. The drive hard into the Silva. Foul! What an interception by Kugel. Well, the ball got to Ruffin instead of the more accomplished ball handlers like the Silva, Cody Williams, and obviously Simpson, and they made him make a play, and they've been so passive against his pressure. This is one of the best free throw shooters in the country, Walter Clayton. Well, he's put on a show here, and I give Williams credit. At least he made him go to his left. <laughs> De Silva, De Silva picks up his fourth foul in 22 seconds to go. Hits this free throw one-point game. Oh, and he misses. Ruffin has the rebound. They swarm in with Hauk. Williams, the freshman. And a foul from behind on Thomas Hauk of Florida. 14.7. And it's obviously they're over the, over the limit, so it's going to be a two-shot foul. Well, I'll tell you what, you do not leave Walter Clayton Jr. Even if somebody else takes a shot and misses, you stay home. You don't even go to the rebound. You stay home on him, particularly if Williams only makes one of two. Cody Williams is now four of six. Now he's got to make. You know, to make it a three-point game, he's got to make the second one. And the second one, after you miss that one, the first one in this situation is much harder. Florida well, is out of timeouts. I'll tell you what, if he doesn't make this one, they're going to have a hard time guarding Tyrese Samuel inside. Three-point game. They're going to go back to the bench and bring in Dak. Well, that's how they're going to try to guard Samuel inside, I guess, right? They're going to guard Samuel with Hadley. Okay. Because you're not going to put the Silva on him with four fouls. Please guard. Clayton's a tie. Good! Good! Nine point five. Timeout, Colorado. That is an incredible shot from deep by a guy who has been unbelievable down the stretch. Well, look how long this shot is. I mean, Simpson's guarding him, and he's, you know, he's been so good at going by. But in this situation, you only guard the three, and that's against pressure. Yeah, now listen, the only thing I would say there is I'd get on his right hand on that situation he's over on his left side and leaving him free to shoot the ball with that right hand it was deep i'm nitpicking a little bit but in that situation you've got to be over on his strong hand clayton's got 33 a new career high two years at iona played high school football in florida and high school basketball a two-time state champion and my goodness, what steely nerves. Well, since they put him back in the game with those four fouls, it's like he's the only one who scored. But Stan, I agree with you 100%. Florida took their foot off the gas too early. Yeah, Colorado. Colorado, Colorado excuse me. They did. I, I think, and now they've got six seconds. You want the ball in Simpson's hands here to make a play. The Gators on a 19 to 6 run. Colorado will inbound. 6.1 to go in regulation. Pullen will be on Simpson. Kugel on De Silva. I like the matchups. Yeah, Kugel's so athletic, he can probably guard De Silva. Williams to inbound. Simpson with it for the lead. Oh! 1.7. 1.7. Long shot. Good as it goes. Colorado. Oh, 
This is an incredible shot. He gets away with a little push off there, but you just had said it, Dan. This guy makes big shots. But he made big plays in the, the first four game. I mean, he has struggled, but he made a big basket at the end, made big passes. This is his reputation. He is a clutch player and no more clutch than right there. And first team all pack 12, KJ Simpson puts it in and the Buffaloes have won their second straight NCAA tournament game, winning in the first four and winning here in round one. Kevin, and I'll give you a little stat. This is the first time that Colorado has won two games in the same NCAA tournament since 1955. Let's send it over to Andy Katz. Wow. All right, KJ, that ball bounced, bounced, and finally dropped in. As you were about to shoot it, what kind of vision did you have on that basket? Uh, I was looking to just be aggressive and drive, maybe draw a foul. Uh, saw the defender got off balance. That's a shot I shoot a bunch of times. It was nothing but repetition. And, you know, once I saw it bounce up a little bit, uh, I, was, I, was, I was hoping it went in. But when it went in, man, it's just amazing. You know, I got my mom here and everything. My dad watching, girlfriend, everybody at home, man, that's for them. This for this team. You just had a March Madness moment that will be forever in Colorado lore. How does that feel? It's amazing. It's amazing, but it's, it's just special to be out here and do it with this group, with this team. Uh, the most wins in Colorado program history. Just have be under a coach like this, fan base like this, who comes out and travel, man, it means everything. You guys seem very poised. You gave up the lead. Yeah. They came all the way back. Clayton hits the three to yeah. tie it. Yeah. Where does that poise and composure come from? Uh, that's just mentally preparation. You're me we mentally prepare in practice. We go through this a uh, bunch of times in practice. You know, we have a competitive group. And, you know, so we're always in this situation in practice. Um, you know, we went through it with coach. But I think everybody out here is just capable. You know, we all have the mentality of just playing with poise when they're under pressure. All right, we'll see you on Sunday. Thank you, appreciate it. Tad, I want to bring you in here. Tad, to that point, Tad. When you call timeout, I saw no panic in there. Where is that from? Yeah, I think it's from a veteran group who, you know, we do time and score in practice a lot. Like KJ said, we, we, we went over that play um, multiple times this year. Haven't had to use it a lot, but, uh, you know, I felt like at halftime and then midway through the second half, I'm like, we got to score 100 to win this game. We score 102. <laughs> I mean, it was just one of those games. It's not, not the other night. Against Boise, you know, it was a defensive struggle tonight. It was an offensive uh, battle. You got to learn to win different ways in March. And uh, when you got a guy like KJ, our whole team played well. Our bench was terrific tonight. When they tied the game, though, as I said, you guys were composed. But what was it that you felt so confident that you had the personnel to win this game? And as you said, to score over 100 when you guys hadn't been doing that. Yeah, I mean, it, what gives you confidence is when you got good players and they know what they're supposed to do and then, you know, and they make plays. I mean, KJ made a play down the stretch and players make plays, Andy, and especially in March. This is not a coach's game in March. This is a player's game. And that's why I'm so happy for our guys. All but one year, a first four team has won another game. Now you get a chance to play another game and it's against Marquette on Sunday. How do you beat the Golden Eagles? I have no idea, but I'm going to try to find out in a very short period of time. I know uh, Shaka Smart's a hell of a coach. they got a hell of a program. But, uh, you know, i got a lot of confidence in our guys. It should be a lot of fun. Thanks, Ted. All right, thanks, Andy. Colorado wins it 102-100. to 100. Simpson, the game-winning shot. And we'll be back to Indianapolis after this. Hey, hey, hey.